Next section, offer. Contracts, offer. The case that we're talking about in this section is Israel Martin against Mellons Incorporated. Question, what was the nature of the contract in this case? Let's see what the court said. Plaintiff Martin entered into a written agreement with defendant Mellons, a farm implement truck dealer, to purchase a truck and attach a stack mover for the total purchase price of $35,389. Martin was given a trading allowance of $17,389 on his old unit, leaving a balance only of $18,000 plus sales tax of $720 or a total balance of $18,720. The agreement provided that Martin mail or bring title to the old unit to Mellon's this week. Martin mailed the certificate of title to Mellon's pursuant to the agreement, but he was allowed to retain the use and possession of the old unit until they had the new one ready. The new unit was not expected to be ready for two to three months because it required certain modifications. During this interim, Mellons performed minor repairs to the trading unit on two occasions without charging Martin for the repairs. So, here's what we have. A truck that has a haystack mover attached to it that's being sold, whereby the buyer is trading in his old unit and he pays the balance for the new unit. And there's a delay for the new unit, and during that delay, um, the question is, what is the status of the parties? All right, so if you're reading this material, you see that there was, there was a problem here because um, there was a destruction of the, of the truck and the, the hay mover. This thing that they're, they're trying to uh, do this deal has been destroyed while it's still in Martin's possession. So the, you know, the question is, since the truck and hay mover were destroyed while still in Martin's possession, why was there a dispute regarding which party should bear the risk of loss? I mean, he still has it in his possession. Isn't it obvious that he should bear the risk of loss? No! <laughs> One of the rules about reading these cases, don't take anything for granted. Have an open mind for everything that you read because you will find that the more you read the facts of the case, the more you read the law, there is much more to any given situation than you can see at what they call first blush. And here is what we will say as to why this was an issue uh, concerning risk of loss. The parties did not have any agreement regarding insurance or risk of loss on this particular unit, and Martin's insurance on the trading unit had lapsed. So this is the problem. They don't have an agreement as to what happens in this particular situation. So the court is being brought, they come before the court to try to you know, sort this thing out. The court also noticed that Mellon's, Mellon's refused Martin's demand for his new unit, and Martin brought this suit. The parties subsequently entered into an, an agreement by which Martin purchased the new unit but they reserve their rights in any lawsuit arising out of the prior incident. Okay, so let's move forward. How did the North Dakota statute define seller's tender of delivery? Seller's tender of delivery. What, are they, what is meant by that in North Dakota? And here's what the statute said. Manner of seller's tender of delivery. Tender of delivery requires that the seller put and hold conforming goods at the buyer's disposition and give the buyer any notification reasonably necessary to enable him to take delivery. The manner, time, and place for tender are determined by the agreement and this chapter, I'm referring to this statute. And in particular, A, tender must be at a reasonable hour, and if it is of goods, they must be kept available for the period reasonably necessary to enable the buyer to take possession. But, B, Unless otherwise agreed, unless otherwise agreed, the buyer must furnish facilities reasonably suited to the receipt of the goods. Next question. Upon what rationale 
did the court rely in citing the Pennsylvania federal case? Now, the court in its decisions will cite different cases. Sometimes they cite cases of its own jurisdiction. In this case, we're talking North Dakota. But sometimes what happens is the court at that particular time does not have a case of its own jurisdiction, of its own state, that it can use as a precedent. So what the courts often do in those situations is look to another jurisdiction, another state that has had this particular situation previously, and look to see what the courts cited in that situation. Uh, those courts are well respected, and sometimes, very often, their rulings are, are applied in the, in the other jurisdiction. And the court said this about the Pennsylvania federal case. Since the purchaser, the party training in the older craft, had retained possession, it might follow that the risk would not be deemed to have passed as to the retained airplane, since there was neither delivery nor tender of delivery shown. Okay, so the court looked at Pennsylvania, the North Dakota court looked at the Pennsylvania situation, and they said, well, you're, you're, you're still in possession of it. It was destroyed while it was in your, your possession. You haven't had any discussion about risk of loss. Looking at Pennsylvania, it is not deemed to have passed to, to the uh, property, since there was neither delivery nor tender of delivery shown. If you haven't delivered it, risk of loss is still on you because you, it's still in your position.